With the fish visiting that margin regularly, I needed to get my rod out as soon as possible. So I stripped the rod down to nothing. There's a leader bound on this lake, so no lead core. I decided not to use any tubing as well. The water's very clear and very shallow. So by just having a piece of mono with nice big lumps of putty all the way up it, you've got a very good presentation. It's almost impossible for them to spot. And it's also going to be pinned down very nicely as well. So I've got that done, um, then readied my rig. Two little bits of maize with a bit of foam in the middle, soaked in real pungent flavour. That would hopefully be enough to get me a bite, you know. Bright bit of yellow, the carp are going to see that as soon as they come onto the spot, especially in the shallow water. So I got the rod ready, um, but to get a rig onto the spot, I was going to use a method called the washing line. I'm sure some of you would have done it. It's a little bit of a muck about, but it does enable you to get rigs into positions that you wouldn't normally be able to. So the first step was to go round to the hole in the trees, position a storm pole, but before I put the storm pole in the ground, I wrap an elastic band around the top of the pole. And this would enable me to trap my line underneath that. And then got my spawn rod, flicked the spawn out as far as I could from that bank, walked back round to my swim, attached a two and a half ounce lead to the quick chain swivel, which is attached to my main line, which will at a later point have the rig attached to it. Cast it over the spawn line, and then went back round into the trees and reeled the spawn back to the bank. And as I reeled the spawn in, it catches the main line of the rod, pick up my line once I get the spawn out of the water that's got my main line attached to it so I grab that I then pass my lead underneath the tree if you don't have to cast a the lead then there's absolutely no reason not to use a massive one so a big flat pair five ounces is what I went for I then put a nice big loop of PVA tape onto the end of my spod rod the spod rod is then used to ship the rig out over the spot and I drop it into place and then because you're holding your line you can feel the lead down onto the spot so perfect rig placement I know exactly where it's going um, because I'd seen fish there, I knew exactly where to put it as well. Once that's in position, sink the line, obviously that's when the putty comes in handy, sink the line, attach it to the pole, really easy, just put a small loop up through the elastic band, a little leaf or a tiny bit of soft twig is enough just to grip in place, and then from the swim, you then tighten the line up. So from the pole to the rod, the line is dead tight and well above the water surface, stops any birds and whatnot bumping into it, but from the pole to the lead, it's completely slack, sunk perfectly and well out of harm's way. A couple of handfuls of hemp, groats and whatnot to finish it off. Not a lot of bait at all. Because of the bird problems that I could well end up facing, I decided just to put a very small amount of bait out. Should they come in and trash it, it won't take them long to clear it out. Then they'll disappear and the same for the cart. And hopefully that'll be enough to do me a bite. I'm now sat behind the rod, well into dark, and I've heard a few fish down that way. I've only put the one rod out, uh, I did have a little lead around earlier to try and find other areas, but it is so shallow, so weedy, I just decided that you know, that rod should be enough. That's the reason I've come into this swim. If it wasn't for that spot, I simply wouldn't be in this peg. So all my eggs are in that basket, and I am very confident of getting a fish on that rod. You know, they're there regularly, and hopefully they'll come back. Now the rig is in position. I've heard them out there, and uh, I would certainly hope that I can catch something between now and the morning.